Hello, my name is Brian Bennett, and I am a prevention specialist in behavioral health. My name is David Eppiheimer. I'm an addiction specialist in behavioral health. Dr. Eppiheimer, I know that you are working for Heal River Healthcare in behavioral health and are on the opioid grant team that is addressing the opioid epidemic. Is the opioid epidemic now under control during the COVID-19 pandemic? Brian, I wish I could tell you that the USA and Gila River now have the opioid epidemic under control. But unfortunately, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the opioid problem has gotten worse. In fact, in the Gila River Indian community, the number of opioid overdoses has increased by over 20% in 2020 during the time we were dealing with COVID-19. This is also true in the state of Arizona, as well as in the rest of the country. I think that COVID-19 has resulted in more stress and other behavioral health problems due to the isolation and the inability to be with family and friends like we used to before the pandemic. The misuse of alcohol, drugs, and opioids may be a result of that isolation. Can you explain to our audience what are opioids? Opioids are chemicals that are used in medicines to control pain. Their main effect is in the brain where you really feel pain. Your brain also makes these chemicals to help you manage some pain without taking medications. Naturally occurring opioids come from the poppy plant and are in medications like morphine and drugs like heroin. Synthetic opioids are made in a lab and are not naturally occurring. Some synthetic opioids are oxycodone and fentanyl, which are often stronger than opioids from the poppy plant. What is fentanyl? Fentanyl is a very strong opioid that is used to treat severe pain, such as from cancer or when somebody has surgery. Fentanyl that is used by medical providers to relieve a patient's pain usually comes in a patch or a liquid medicine that is given in an IV for surgery. Fentanyl is not available in a pill when it is dispensed by a pharmacy. Fentanyl can be very dangerous if not taken under a medical provider's direction. Why is fentanyl so dangerous? Fentanyl is about 25 times as strong as morphine or heroin and if it is prescribed by a medical provider, it has to be taken exactly as the label said. There is a high risk of an unintentional overdose if too much fentanyl is used. Unfortunately, in the past few years, illegal fentanyl is being made in labs by the Mexican cartel and is often sold as a pill. These pills are often blue in color and sometimes called blues, perks, or M30s. People buying them often think they are getting real pain pills to try and don't always know that they are counterfeit and contain fentanyl. Sometimes fentanyl will come in a powder and can be mixed with methamphetamine or heroin by the cartel. During the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, there were six community members who died from an unintentional fentanyl overdose. The fentanyl was not from a doctor or a pharmacy, but was in a pill made by the cartel. This is why we are trying to alert the community that the opioid epidemic is still a big problem for Gila River, and it needs to be addressed while we are battling COVID-19. What can someone do if they get hooked on fentanyl or get addicted to opioids? I would recommend that they get help as it is very difficult to quit on your own. If someone is using opioids regularly, when they try to stop, they usually will have a withdrawal and get sick, making quitting very difficult. Sometimes detox will be needed to help them quit and not get so sick from the withdrawal. I also recommend that we get them counseling and behavioral health, either as an outpatient or at Tawaja Key, our residential treatment center. Fortunately, there are some medications that can be prescribed to individuals who get addicted to opioids so that their brain can recover and not crave the drug. In the meantime, I recommend that they learn about the dangers of fentanyl and other opioids so they don't accidentally overdose and die.
Why is an opioid overdose so dangerous? Opioids are depressants or downers and usually relax a person and cause sedation in the brain. That is why they're used to treat pain during surgery. If someone takes too much opioid or accidentally takes fentanyl, the brain, get, the brain may get so sleepy that the signal from the brain to tell the lungs to breathe will not work. If that happens, the person will nod off, stop breathing, turn blue, and die if not given the antidote. What does an opioid overdose look like, and what is the antidote for an opioid overdose? That's a good question. Let me have Beth Fabric, a nurse who works with our opioid grant team, answer that for you. Hi, my name is Beth Fabric. I'm a nurse case manager with Gila River Healthcare Behavioral Health Services. Brian, that is a great question. Often with an opioid overdose, one of the first signs we will see is that the person becomes more lethargic or tired and may start nodding off. This person will become more difficult to wake up or by touch or voice. As Dr. Eppelheimer mentioned, if someone takes too much of an opioid, his or her breathing is going to slow down or possibly even stop. We often will see slowed, snoring respirations. And also with an opioid overdose, the pupils in our eyes will become very small and we will call that pinpoint pupils. We may also see that the individual's skin becomes cool and clammy and we may notice blue tinged lips or fingers. If someone would ever see a scenario similar to this, we advise that 911 be called immediately. There is an antidote for an opioid overdose and the medication is called Narcan. Narcan is a nasal spray that if given in time, can reverse an opioid overdose. It works by telling our brain that it needs to start breathing again. Narcan has minimal risk and is very easy to use. We do advise that if Narcan is ever given in the home, that 911 be called for follow-up care or treatment. Who should have Narcan? We advise that our pain patients taking high-dose opioid medications have Narcan in the home and that their family members know how to administer it in case of an accidental overdose. We also recommend that people who might be using heroin or fentanyl have Narcan with them. We would encourage community members that if they know someone that might be at risk for an overdose, that they also have Narcan available. The U.S. Surgeon General announced that with the increasing overdoses in the nation, that Americans should have Narcan at home as part of their first aid kits. We would like more community members to have Narcan at home and be able to respond effectively to an opioid overdose. How can someone get Narcan at GRHC? That's a great question. Gila River Healthcare actually has several options for individuals to receive Narcan. The first option would be to ask your medical provider about Narcan if you might be at risk for an opioid overdose. We also have additional options for individuals that might be at risk for an opioid overdose or if a family member or friend of someone at risk of an overdose would like to have Narcan. They can request a Narcan overdose kit at the Hohokam or Emergency Department Registration Desk and a nurse will provide the needed education. The individual will not need to wait to be seen by a provider. We also have these kits available upon request at the Kamaki and Red Tail Hawk pharmacies. The pharmacist at these locations will provide the needed education. We would like to encourage more members in the community to request these kits because we never know when we could save a life. Is Narcan training available here at Heal River Healthcare? Absolutely. Currently, Gila River Healthcare Behavior Health Services is providing online training once a month. Also, if someone would like to schedule a group or department training, Behavior Health Services would be glad to set that up. We will return to offering these trainings in person when it is safer to do so due to COVID. If anyone has any additional questions regarding overdoses, Narcan, treatment, etc., the number is 602-528-7100.